Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Feels good to be back for the third and final session of Learn Data Visualization with Python. I hope you all had a nice time yesterday with the part one and part two. And today, we are going to like complete the whole visualization aspect. We will try and build some more uh, data visualization things, I would say. And uh, yeah, like just, just have a good time. I uh, think we'll end early, it feels to me today. But even if we do, yeah, we will have loads of learning. Hey, hi, how's it going? Hello, love the excitement. <laughs> Okay, so we'll wait for a couple of more minutes, let people join. Meanwhile, all I can say is, or request you, is please register if you have not done already. So I've posted the registration link in the chat. So would appreciate if you register. And yeah. Also, let me just complete the whole setup. Oops. There goes my mouse. <laughs> hey, yes, I can. So Yep, I think this is the one. There we go. The link to what we have done till now is in the chat. Uh, you can, let me check if I can open it in incognito and search it. Yep, it works, it opens, it has everything. So that's good. <laughs> Okay. Hey, hi, hello, 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 everyone. Oh, yes, dry Sundays, you know, <laughs> I have to do the same. So after the session, I'm going to, hey, hi. Okay, I think we have, <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Uh, yesterday, I kind of gave a homework in a way, I would say. Not exactly homework, more like a practice that if you could make a donut chart for country-wise donut chart, if I remember it correctly. And I think someone had resolved it uh, yesterday and also posted the code in the chat. So all good. Hopefully you all, yes. Uh, yeah <laughs> yep 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 love the excitement so yeah so i i'm i'm going to assume that is done okay i'm not going to show you the code for it i'm not going to write the code for it but i can give you an overview of what you would have to do you would have to initially like instead of industry this would have been like say country wise donut chart function okay uh the data frame would actually call the country column Okay, you'll count the value counts of that country column. You would then here rename the column, let's say to country. Uh, here the names would be country. And of course the title would change depending on it to country-wise distribution. Is there a challenge for that? Ah, uh, no, actually that was just my challenge that I gave. It's nothing from officially from MLH. <laughs> Sorry about that, should have mentioned. Uh, okay. Also, I need, I should talk to Mary about how can I add more challenges, which would make it more exciting for these streams. Uh, you know, something, but let's see. Let's start the REPL. So if you remember it from yesterday's, it was streamlet run main.py. Yep, yeah, I think so. My monitor is on this side, which is why like I look here always. 
it's like at an angle and we'll wait for it to start okay no this is not my first time coming to streamlit thank you okay that started i'll also click on run once so that it actually opens the web view and i can quickly click on open in new tab okay there is a like it's like a sleight of hand you have to do it very quick otherwise you'll lose it <laughs> so we had market cap distribution yesterday as one of the things also i should remember somehow i end up overusing my cpu limit which is why my app keeps crashing so i'm not going to do that today okay i'm not going to select top x companies or whatever uh, if we had a sector wise donut chart then we had an industry wise donut chart we were like okay there are loads of industries it seems and we also found to like you know if you click on one of those things it automatically reallocates the remaining one into the pie donut chart yep and also kind of makes it more bigger and if you hover over it you can see a few things there's also an expand button here so if you go and click on that expand button it will show you an expanded format of course so yeah that was what we had now i'm going to go out of your hair so that you can focus solely on the screen and we'll move ahead meanwhile some background music okay that's a bad one <laughs> okay i think that should be good enough uh not disturbing anyone but at the same time some good background music now let's move on what are we going to do next so yesterday i promised that we would actually first build a map, a world map. So we can call it like global distribution map by mm, what number of companies? Okay, so globe. Let's create a global distribution map. Okay, let's let's start from there. The very basic. Let's create a global distribution map. So let's write a function. Okay, I'm I'm getting directly into the coding. So I hope you can follow along. I showed you what we did yesterday. I also showed you like, I can all, yeah. Let me quickly also go over the code. So we had created a visualizations.py where all our visualizations are going in. We had a main.py, which is our main file where we have a defined streamlet, where we are having these conditions of if, else, if, whatever, whatever. We are calling the main function right here. We also created a utils data underscore utils function where we are uh, we have created some helper functions you can say in a way and also what are we visualizing we were visualizing companies data dot csv which i spent like 15 minutes yesterday sharing and then i think someone pointed out that could have done it on replet <laughs> so that was too much time waste and too much too stupid for me but i'm glad that we com completed it okay so we are visualizing companies data, the top thousand companies by market cap in the world. Yeah, perfect. Uh, can I link this to GitHub? Yes, definitely go for it. I have no issues whatsoever. I would actually encourage if you can put this on GitHub, uh, also probably ensure that your Streamlit application is deployed on cloud and if it is deployed on cloud that way you can share the link of your streamlit application in your github readme how can i do it okay yep let me help you with that i can say uh i think the easiest and the dirtiest solution would be to download each of these files right if you click on it you can download it i think there's also a way to download it as a zip the whole thing download it as a zip which means that uh you know you'll have a zip file and you have to extract that file create a github repository and upload those that folder or slash those files on your github repository or you can do it from command line make a 
repository, do a git initialization, add your files there. So there yeah, are multiple ways to do it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get into GitHub right now, but yeah, download it as a zip, the whole thing, or you can download individual files by like these three dots and download. Or you can also copy paste it by creating the file with the same name in your local and copy pasting the code. Uh, I remember there was like one MLH session where they talked uh, about how to set up Git or GitHub. So if I can find it quickly, I can share it with you. Uh, let me see. Give me one second, please. Yeah, okay, it was in GitHub Cloud Week. So, like, this is one of the links. It, it is like not hard and fast, the only link. So, yep. There we go. So, this is one of the Git slash GitHub uh, session that was taken uh, during MLH Cloud Week. There are multiple, it seems to me. So, if you go on to the MLH channel, you should probably share directly the channel. Yep, there we go. The MLH channel is, or Major League Hacking channel, is in the chat. So if you go over here, you can also watch all the past streams that have happened. So you can find so many of even my videos, someone else's videos, anything and everything. Okay. Moving on. Okay, so now we have done an overview of what we are doing. Let's go on to create a global map distribution. Okay. So creating a function, we know we use the keyword def. Uh, so create global distribution map. Okay. Now. What is it going to take as an input? It is going to take data frame as an input. Okay. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is count the number of countries that exist in our data frame. So we can go something like country underscore counts. Under, okay. Yeah, that should be it. So from the data frame, remember in our CSV file, we have a country column. Okay. So that is what we are going to use. So inside this, we are going to say country. Then how do I count how many times something is there? So I think we used that yesterday. We use value counts and then we do a reset index on it. So value underscore counts and then dot reset underscore index. Okay. We had seen the output of it yesterday so we know that we also need to rename the columns so we will do something like which we did yesterday so same as like industry uh, counts dot columns we will do country counts dot columns equals to we will have one of the columns as country and the other column as let's say number of companies so till now i think this is very bit too much similar so i am not going to explain that the magic happens in the next line so when we define our figure before that we were using px.py now this time we are going to use something else and i actually have that open for all of you there we go yes this one so we are going to use px dot choropleth. Okay, I kept pronouncing it as chloropleth, but it's choropleth, which if you look, 
A choropleth map is a map composed of colored polygons. Okay. And that is what is happening in the map that we have. Oops. No, no, sorry. The map that we have, it has like these colored polygons, or let's say the map is colored in a way about something. Okay. In our case, it would be like number of companies, which I will show you, like how it looks like and what is being printed on the map. But we are going to end up with a map which would be very similar to this one. So if you want the link to the documentation, let me post it in the chat. So there you go. You can find all about Koro, Koropleth maps. Hopefully that's the right pronunciation. So, how, and how do we use it? Like, if you remember from yesterday, I told you like, it's nothing different than looking at the documentation understanding. So Koropleth map, it takes in a data frame. It takes something called as locations, which if I hover over, it is ISO alpha right here. Like if you see this, which is what is being given here. Yeah, I know, right? It's a strange word. <laughs> uh, definitely new for me when I was preparing for this session. That was the first time I ever came across that. Uh, then there's a color which is life exp and it says that life exp is a column of gap minder. So we understand that the color is given by a column and hover name column to add hover information. So hover name is coming from country it seems and there's color dot continuous scale equals to this. I think we are going to keep that as a same. Uh, sorry, keep that same. Okay, so do we need to import anything for Coropleth? Uh, no, we already have uh, what? What was it? Plotly. Yeah, plotly.express imported at the top. We have already used it, so we don't need to do anything. It's a method that exists on or a live function that exists on this library. So we don't need to do anything. Just make sure that the spelling is correct. So it's px.coropleth. Then what are we going to do? We will say that the locations is going to be, oh, but before that, remember we have to first pass it the data frame. Okay. We saw that in the documentation that it takes data frame as an input. In our case, same as yesterday, yesterday inside of px.py, we were passing this new industry underscore counts variable that we created. So now in px.coropleth, we'll pass country counts, the variable that we created right here. So this variable comes here. Then it takes in locations. So locations equals to, it's going to be this column name, which is country. Okay. Then the location mode. So location mode, I don't know if this will show it. Mm, okay, it's not showing. But the location mode is country space names. Okay. Now this is very particular slash very peculiar, I would say. Uh, because uh, I, I can I'll also show you the error later. Then we decide the color. The color will be based on the number of companies. Like if there are like only 10 companies from one country, we'll show some color. Uh, the color should change depending on the number of companies that are from particular country. So in our case, like we have United States as a country. We don't know how many companies are in United States. We don't know how many companies are from like Saudi Arabia right here. We don't know how many companies are from Denmark, right? So the color is going to change based on the number of companies that are coming from a particular country. So the color mode would be change it based on the number of companies, which is the column that we created right here. Okay, so that's the color and on hover, so hover name on hover, tell me that, hey, this is the country. Like this is USA, this is Canada, this is India, this is uh, Saudi Arabia, something. 
then there was that one particular line which i'm going to try so i think it was color continuous scale right yep color continuous scale is going to be px dot colors dot sequential dot plasma so i'm actually going to exactly do that px dot colors dot sequential yep dot plasma so there are multiple colors so there's like sequential dot there's purples are plasma blah 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 okay so we will try few more colors okay just have like fun with it and what should be the title of my chart here it would be global distribution of top companies okay now i'm going to use this format visualizations button right here so that it's formatted nicely and i'm also going to copy and paste this in chat i hope it oops i think it will break for as it called wait let me do a control z i think it breaks for youtube where is the format button it's next to the name of the file so this is my like name of the file right here visualizations.py and there is a format visualizations.py right next to it okay there's a suggestion control s should do it it doesn't for me which is why i always use this hey wait can i command this to it for me I don't know doesn't work for me neither command s nor control s should reload it probably anyways now at the end of it there is a fig variable that we created we will return that fig variable okay so i've shared the code and i've also shared yeah and you already have my visualization set by now what are we going to do we are going to move over to main.py so i'm going to copy this name this function name that i have created going to move over to main.py and here on like line 4 where we are importing so many things i'm going to put comma and then paste that and let's format it to so paste that function but it is grayed out slightly as opposed to everything else that is like white here which means it is not being used so we will also make sure that we use it so under this elif line elif chart underscore type double equals to we can call it what the name that we gave there right so global map distribution actually let's call it global distribution of top companies okay so this is going to be the button the radio button on the sidebar the global distribution of top companies i'm going to create a fig variable here which will be which will call this function remember our function takes in a data frame in our case our data frame was df filtered so i'm going to pass that here and to plot a plotly chart yeah we do st dot plotly underscore chart and then fig yep that should do it uh oh i haven't created this name so i'm going to copy this name and we need to add it 
to our this sidebar st dot sidebar after industry wise donut chart i'm going to put a comma and paste this if you have done the country wise uh donut chart so paste it after that but make sure that it is inside this array now let's come over to streamlit source file changed so rerun and i can see global distribution of top companies right here let's click on it and there we have it okay our map st dot plotly chart uh global yes you can do that i think shouldn't matter because all we are doing is assigning it to variable and adding it it just makes it more uh what do you call it? mixed up too big of a thing right so if even if you do that pretty sure that shouldn't matter yep it, it works okay so that's not a problem just like i think it becomes too big and also finding a pattern this way we have found a pattern in our code that you create a fig variable call the function pass it the inputs then plot if it is a matplotlib then you do st.pyplot but if it is a plotly that you are using for plotting, then you use a plotly underscore chart, right? So it depends on like gives more structure. I feel. Uh, okay, I, I'm I'm waiting. Don't worry. I'm going to wait here till like one ten seconds. Let's say. appreciate that thank you so much i think yeah we, we all love that it just looks so cool <laughs> the scale in my charts is from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 i'm confused about the question which scale are we talking about are you talking about this number of companies 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 if yes, then is this stream a last part of data visualization? Uh, data visualization, all caps. Okay, that gave me a heart attack right there. But yes, uh, this is the last part of that. Uh, I don't think that should have been a problem. Like, I don't think our code in any way would ensure that you have like 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. So can you like quickly check if you have like the same, let's say number of companies here, you're using value counts, you're using reset index. I don't know why I don't see the map. Okay, so what have we done till now? Have you had like step? Let's go step by step. We created this function create global distribution map. Okay, that takes a data frame as an input. Then inside data frame country dot value counts dot reset index. Then that was put to a variable country underscore counts. Then we did country counts dot columns equals to this. Okay, so country and number of companies. Then we created a figure which is px dot and then we passed it a bunch of things. First thing we passed it was country counts, then locations. Okay. Locations equals to country. Location mode is country space names. Okay. All small. This is very important because this is how Plotly wants us to put the location mode as. Okay. We cannot change this. If you try changing it, it will give an error or it will not print anything. So please make sure that the country location mode is all small case country space names. Then we have color equals to number of companies, which is the variable that we have, like not the variable, the column name that we have here. Then hover name is country. Color continuous scale equals to px dot colors dot sequential dot plasma. This looks big enough to maybe mess up. 
So I'm going to paste that in chat. Okay, so there it is. And then just the title. Okay. And all we did was returned fig, like return fig at the end of this. Make sure that it is like in the same line as where we defined the variable. So return fig. And to make sure it is properly formatted, use format visualizations.py, like that button, or I think even control S will work as pointed out in the chat. So I would say right now, please ensure that everything is exactly the same. Wait, you're, you're pasting the whole code of your thing. Please only paste this create global distribution map. Okay, it's very difficult to understand this. Uh, can you please share your code like from Replit? Can you please share the link to your Replit? That would make it easier or everyone to debug. OK, once OK, I figure out the issue. I put value counts country. OK, so you are counting the num. Wait. Oh, value counts country. Yeah, data frame country, then value counts. This is like sector wise donut chart, I think. Okay. This is something else. Uh, just makes it very difficult to debug it from this. So I just humbly request if you can share the link to your Ripple, that would be great. Okay, main.py formatted and moving on right now. Uh, this is the map that we received. Let me just expand it. Now, if I hover over things like, let's say, India, seven companies, United Kingdom, 39 companies, France, 31, Spain, 14, United States, 437, and United States is here as well. So this is also United States. This is Canada, 44 companies, Mexico or Mexico, <laughs> nine companies. Okay, Colombia, one. Brazil, 13. So country Brazil, number of companies, 13 here. Argentina, one company, okay, in top 1,000. It was px.coropleth. Okay, so spelling mistake, I think. Okay, perfect. No worries. I'm glad you figured it out. So South Africa, three companies right there. Saudi Arabia, 12 companies. Turkey, one company. So, like, we have a very nice map which shows us the total distribution of companies around the world. Okay. There's a color map or the index which shows, like, you know, if it's more blue, it's like near about 50. It becomes like more purple and then orange and then let's say towards yellow. Can we fix the color format and how? Oops. Oh, no, 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 no. Reloaded. So we can try a bunch of different colors. So here, px.colors. We are using sequential. Okay. But in some cases, it is helpful to use, let's say, dot diverging or dot cyclical scale instead. So let's try that. Can we try like diverging? So now, inside the diverging, is there any like color format that exists is like army rose it seems balance and curl delta earth fall so many let's try with the first one that we get army rose i don't know how it is going to look like so i am going to take a guess same as you are if i go over to this okay 
So there is this color, which gets shown. Kind of looks the same to me. What else? There was this or there was cyclical. And I don't know what colors exist on that. So there's like edge on it. Read on this. And okay. This color is much more different. Okay. So like more popping rather than being very, uh, I don't know. Very merged into. So maybe you could use that. So cyclical dot is HSVR underscore R. Let's rerun this. Uh, something. <laughs> there is something. I'm not going to say what because <laughs> it just looks ugly. I like this one. Color equals to Bergeron. Is it like under which? So the idea is that like you have different color scales and you have different colors on those colors. So could probably use one of those colors, one of those scales, and there's diverging, there's cyclical, and we had sequential. There were more colors on sequential. So now if I go for, let's say, I don't know, not blues, dark mint. Don't know what that is going to look like. Okay, looks more like a mint. Yep, understood. So that's where we have a global distribution map. Okay. Oh, from the Plotly page. Perfect. I'm glad you're looking at the documentation. So that's nice. Now you know where to find the documentation, you know where to search for more colors. So extremely happy about that. And Okay, now I also wanted to show you, like what if in your location mode, you remove the country space names, okay? What happens then? I just have country. If I reload it, so this is the problem. So the location mode, it only reads the value, like one of the following, ISO3, USA states, country space names, or geojson id okay? So it needs to be one of these like four things, okay? Which is why I kept it as country space names, okay? That was one of the reason. And you can try the other three options. I don't think USA states would work because this is more of a global map rather than USA specific map. So I don't know what about the other two. Okay, that I would leave it to you to try it and see what's the difference, what does it do? It, does it make any errors, give any errors or something? So I leave you to that. And now let's move on to the next part. So we have created a global distribution of top companies and all we did was counted the number of companies that exist in every country and then paste it or put it on a global map. What else can we do? So I have like a bunch of other ideas of what we could do. The first one is uh, going to be a stacked bar chart, okay? So let's plot a stacked bar chart, which basically means that we are going to stack the number of industries. So we are going to plot the distribution of industries within each country stacked on each other. So let me see if there is a bar chart here. In subplots, is it? Like, 
I don't exactly remember the documentation. So even I'm going to search it with you all. Okay, it's not in here for sure. What about bar charts? Is it inside the bar charts option? Yeah, so we are going to create something like this. Okay, stack bar chart. So from the graph, it looks like it is like the number of medals, gold, silver, bronze, different medals, won by different countries. So let's say for one country, it has won like 12 bronze medals. Uh, so for Canada, yeah, 12 silver medals and nine gold medals. So this is a very nice interactive visualization where you can have like, let's say the number of countries on the X axis and on the Y axis, you are stacking their uh, things. In this case, it's medal. Okay. In our case, we can actually stack uh, the number of industries in each country. So my X axis would be the countries and my Y axis or the stacking would actually be uh, like, 10 technology industry, five oil and gas industry, three uh, medical industry or healthcare industry, four banks, like stack on each other, okay? Stack on top of each other. That's what we are going to do in our stacked bar chart. I hope you all followed along and I hope this example was helpful because we are going to build something similar to this. So let's go to our visualizations. I'm going to come like, on line 53 and yeah, it's outside of this particular function. Let's create a new function. Uh, I'll give it a good enough name. So we are going to plot stacked bar chart by country and industry. And that would take an input of data frame. Okay, so plot stacked bar chart by country and industry. I think the name is pretty understandable. <laughs> so what are we going to do uh, here? So step one, we'll first create a variable. Let's call it industry underscore counts, right? So industry underscore counts, and we are going to use the group by functionality so df dot group by. Now the group by functionality it comes from pandas. So if I have pandas open somewhere, okay. So group by a group by operation involves some combination of splitting the object, applying a function, and combining the results. The whole idea is can you group two things together? So let's say this is a data frame. Uh, you can look at the output of the data frame in a nice table format right here. So there's like, this is my index of the columns. There's like animal column, which has like falcon, falcon, parrot, parrot, and max speed at which they can fly. Okay, so 380, I don't know, kilometer per hour, meter per second, centimeter per second, something, but there's a max speed. So now if I group by the column animal and then find the mean on the or the average of it. So by group by, what it did was it found what is repeated here. So in this case, like falcon is twice, so combine it as one. Parrot is twice, so combine it as one. So found the similar things and grouped it together to have like one unique output. And the mean is basically taking an average of these two speeds and these two speeds, okay? So we are not going to focus on the mean part because we are going to find out the size, which we can talk about. But yeah, this is what the group by does, okay? It groups your things together to have one unique item as output. So two falcons became one, two parrots became one. Perfect. So in our case, what are we going to group by? So we are going to group by, let's say, step one, country. Okay. We are going to group by two things. 
Why? Because in our data frame, like let's go over to view data table, there's like two United States. Like if I sort it by country, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like X number of United States. So all these United States should stick together and become like one United States as output. Similarly for other countries. Wow, there's so many United States. Okay, similarly for let's say Singapore here or Saudi Arabia here or Russia here. So it's repeated multiple times. So that's why we are using group by to squish them together to have like one country as output. Okay. Similarly, industry, even the industry, like I have so many industries like which are kind of repeated right here. So advertising agencies like twice can become one aerospace and defense so many times can become one. So that's why we are going to also squish it by industry. Okay. Now, once we have done the group by in our example, we like this was taking the mean of something. But in our case, we are not going to take the mean, we are going to find the size. So dot size. So what does dot size do? It basically finds the count or the num total number of times. So if I search that data frame group by size, yep, perfect, there it is. Number of rows in each group. So here's an example. There's like A repeated twice and there's like one, two and B once, which has the value of let's say three. So if I group by level equals to zero something, ignore that, but the size, it counts like A is twice, like one, two, and B is once, so one. So size make, takes out a count. Here's another example, it seems, which for some reason is something. Okay, group by A and then find the size. So A is like one, two, Oh, this is very confusing to understand but ignoring that the size finds the number of times something exists so wait what is this sorry so dot size and then we will do dot reset underscore index which we have been doing since like quite some time okay so this reset index and then what do we do we actually like rename the columns so this line like example, let's say country underscore counts dot columns that was renaming the columns. Even this line was renaming the columns. Uh, but there's also one more thing you could do like inside reset index, you could actually give a name as counts. Okay. So that's one way, like another way to actually pass the name. So reset index, if you search for reset index in pandas, I think we should be able to find it. Yep. Reset index and names. In our case, there's like one here. So name is, let's say counts. I think that should be enough. And now it's going to get slightly confusing so please bear with me we are going to use something like create a variable let's say wide data frame okay that is going to take this variable that we created industry counts then do something called as a pivot on it okay what is this pivot let's go over to pandas data frame again and search for pivot Okay, I think this should be a good enough example. So this is our original table. So there's foo bar bars zoo, which is foo bar, foo bar bars zoo. And if you apply a pivot on it, on index, let's say foo, it 
basically rotates your whole data frame. So whatever was the column that kind of came down to your row, but they also did a bunch of other things. And they do something like very simple here, which would show it easily. We've kind of done something confusing here, but the idea is your, let's say, column names, they come down to your row names. And then you do a bunch of other iterations or calibrations right here, which would, yeah, which would end up being these values. But in our case, it's going to be very much simple. So for us, what we are going to do is we are going to say that the index column is going to be country. Okay. So the countries are going to be like the index column, or they are also going to be the things that are on our X axis of the plot, the columns. Okay. So the columns are going to be industry and the values in those columns that they represent would actually be so the values. Values is going to be exactly this variable that I created, which is like counts. And yep, that's it. Now let's move on and let's plot this for now. Okay. Let's plot this to create a bar chart. I'm going to create fig equals to px, that is our this one, uh, plotly express dot bar. It takes in bunch of things. It would first take the data frame. Okay. It takes the data frame as an input. In our case, our data frame is coming from this wide underscore DF. Okay. On our X axis, What are we going to plot? My X axis is going to be my countries. So in the Y DF, this index is my country. So I can do something like Y DF dot index. So that is my X axis. My X axis is supposed to be the country names or this country column. That's why we do Y DF dot index. What about my Y axis? Okay. So y axis is going to be my y df dot like it should be the number of industries like count the number of industries right so i'm going to do like something wide underscore df dot this variable you can say temporarily dot columns that should be on my y axis it should be number of industries and let's also give it a I think you can give it directly here as x axis underscore title. Hmm. Don't think so. Can I give it a title here? Yep. I think we can give it a title. Let me quickly check. So I don't think we have done that before. Let's see the plotly bar chart.
Yep, there it is. No, not this one. I think it should be this. No, not even that one. Sorry. I'm basically trying to find a way to show you what is like update layout. Update underscore layout. So this should be enough to understand. So we are going to use something like update layout that exists. So why are we going to use it? Let's assume that you have created a bar chart, but you want to update a bunch of things in that bar chart. Okay, how do you do that? What do you do? So I'm going to give it, let's say a title here, number of companies by industry in each country. This is like the title. But can I update some things here? So I can do something like a big dot update underscore layout. Inside this, I can directly pass a few things like x axis title is going to be let's say country and similarly the y axis underscore title it's going to be number of companies and i'm also going to give it like the bar mode okay so the bar mode is going to be stack so there's a group option, there's a relative option, there's a bar mode equals to stack, which gives me this stacked bar chart, right? So bar mode stack and yeah, figure dot update layout. So I'm going to add that bar mode equals to stack. Perfect. And what else? There was an update layout. There's also update traces. Update underscore traces. Update underscore traces, it gives something like text size, text font size is 12, text angle at zero, and text position outside, clip on axis, blah, blah, blah. Don't know if on their example, if they have hover template. Yep, they, they have hover template. So we are going to use this to actually uppercase O in, oops. Okay, let me go over to the chat quickly. Appreciate this, really appreciate this. And yep, fixed the issue. Uh, bar mode stack. Let's go over to the next one, which was this hover template, okay? So hover template, we are going to tell it like on hover, how do you exactly show the data? Like the text that you show, what should it look like? And you can do that in the update traces. Yep, update traces. Here we are going to define the hover template. Yep. our template and we are going to say that percentage now this is going to be very difficult to understand but let's like follow along with me percentage y companies in percentage x dash percent label you can take a guess about where this y is coming from where this x is coming from but where is this label coming from that's very interesting and curious so once we have the output we have plotted the output then we'll come back and try and change these things and see if it still works and what are the potential errors so there is 
a solution which says like probably from the index the index being country so why companies in x like let's say five companies in technology dash label is country let's say canada so five companies in uh, i don't know oil and gas dash canada sounds about right could be about could be right but we will see the output and then we can you know think about okay this is where it coming it's coming from so return fig so that's what we are doing we are returning figure i know we have done a bunch of things here like update layout update traces have attempted so many things once we come back we can try and see if we can merge it all together we'll put another elif we'll say chart type equals to uh what can we give it it's like too big of a name so what's the smallest name that we can give oh it's not chart it's chart underscore type okay chart underscore type is we can say it's a stacked bar chart by country and industry okay so by country and industry there's a stacked bar chart and let's create our variable figure which calls this particular function and that part particular function will take input of df underscore filtered perfect then we will do st dot plot lee underscore chart and figure okay now it shows a red squiggly line right under this saying that where is this coming from you have not imported it so let's scroll all the way to the top and import it from visualizations which is good but this particular name it's still not in the sidebar so i'm going to copy that scroll up to this line 14 and after this i'm going to paste that name format main.py oops mine went into reconnecting oh no 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 hopefully it does not lose my code i'm going to copy this code for sure I don't know if you can see, like on the left hand side, it shows like mine went into reconnecting. Uh, stopped offline, something, something, something. Okay, I'm going to ensure that I copy the visualizations.py. Everything else, even if it goes away, I don't care because I can rewrite it quickly. Uh, okay, so it seems to me that visualizations.py has not gone anywhere. Tagged bar chart by country and industry. Okay, when this looks good, let me copy this name and paste it right here. And the import is still there. Okay, I think it should be fine enough. I'll have to rerun my application. Wait for it to run. And Okay, there's a question here. What's wrong? Well, you have not closed anything after like update layout. In your update layout, pick dot update layout after bar mode stack, you have to close the bracket. Yep, I closed the bracket here. No stream limit. All right. Okay. So let's go. Okay. Let me run this. Seems like my stream limit application is running fine. So there's my stack bar chart by country and industry. I clicked on it. And there's the data. Okay, I thought, where's the data? So that's my data. Let's hover over it. 
So three companies in Japan dash Japan. Two companies in Japan dash Japan. The label. What is that label? Is it what I see like the grocery stores and things? Like let's say this one. 16 companies in United States dash United States. So the label, it seems to be the country name exactly. So if I remove that, okay, so let's do one thing at a time. I'm going to remove dash label from the update traces. Okay, rerun it. It tells me I'm not connected, but I have. Yeah, it does that sometimes. Just like make sure that you have copied your code. Do a control A slash command A, control C slash command C, and uh, copy your code and then reload replit. It did that for me as well. Okay. So the label was basically the country name. So my label is nothing but the country name that are being plotted here. Okay. Okay, that's too big. Oops. I can. I think there's an option to reset access. Yep, there's a reset access. But you can focus on, let's say, one particular country here. So the label was nothing but the label that I can see here in the United States, United Kingdom, Turkey, stuff like that. So that was coming as part of dashed label. What else? uh bar mode stack that's kind of understandable but can i actually put all these things x axis title y axis title bar mode stack if i copy this in my px dot bar if i put it right there does it still work let's quickly check it out reload it dot bar got an unexpected keyword argument x axis underscore title so we cannot actually give x axis underscore title there i cannot give it x equals to country because i have already defined that here right so x axis title does not work is there anything else in the bar chart that will work so if i hover over it there is x which is, let's say, what data to show, Y, which is what data to show. There's a color and then row, column, spacing, hover name. It has hover name, it has hover data, it has custom data, error X, error Y. Range, it has title, which we used already. It has a width and height, opacity, like it has a bunch of things, but it does not seem to have the title of the axis. So I think it's good that we put it in the update layout. Okay. Similarly, update traces has hover template. Does update layout allow me to add something like that? Let's try it. If I take this out from here, like copy this, can I add it? after this go over reload this okay hover template is not defined did you mean template can we try the template okay so the best way to learn is find the documentation do it as the documentation says and then try out things here and there okay i i tried to give it template let's see Okay, seems to me that it will not accept the hover template the way we gave it. It does not understand this percentage X, percentage Y. So even, oops, not this. Uh, the hover template does not work there. So which basically means that this is the way you are supposed to write it. You define your bar chart, give it a title, tell it what to plot on which axis, and then you update the layout and give it 
let's say title on the x-axis, title on the y-axis, define the bar mode, which is like stack here. Then you do the update traces. And there you can define a hover template, which is more dynamic. Okay, it works as the Python F strings, which we actually used yesterday. Yeah, something like this. Makes it more dynamic by just doing this percentage Y. Companies in percentage X. Now I have did loads of command Z. I've done loads of command Z and this is what we end up with. Okay, perfect. So if I actually can zoom in a bit, but that does not seem to do good. Zoom out is fine. There's a pan which allows you to like move left and right or top and down. Watch him. Uh, there's a zoom which if I click does not work, but if I can, I can kind of zoom in more on particular bar chart, let's say, right? Fourteen companies in United States in soft like seventeen companies in United States in software application, sixteen companies in software infrastructure. Okay, so that was the number of companies by industry in each country. Can you similarly plot number of companies by like sector? I think that's what the name was, right? Sector. Yep. So plot a bar chart, which is like exactly sim like exactly like this, but instead of focusing on industry, it should plot it by the sector. So that would be kind of like a homework here. And there's a, okay, sorry, I missed the chat a bit. Okay, there was an error, key error, country, comma, industry. Oh, yeah, you're missing these square brackets around. Since like we are focused grouping by two things, it comes inside an array, okay? Let me come back on screen. Uh, yeah, hey, everyone. So we plot, we did a plot of a stacked bar chart by country and industry. I want you to do a very similar thing, a stacked bar chart by country and sector. Okay. So that is very important by country and sector. It shouldn't be that difficult because everything else remains the same same except for what you are grouping it by you will group it by sector you will in the pivot you will add like sector here so yeah i think those two things should be fine and you can make your bar chart and with that i think we can take a quick break right now and once we come back from the break we will see if it is possible to make a very similar bar chart using, I don't know, that plot mode. Okay. So we'll check that. And what else can we do? We'll also see, I think, maybe a scatter plot. Okay. Or a bubble map. Uh, oh, and that, that wouldn't look good. Scatter plot. I think that plot would be good. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yep. So, uh, before we go on a break, any questions? We'll take uh, like a 10 minutes break. But meanwhile, all I ask you to do is please plot a stacked bar chart by country and sector. So once we come back from the break, we'll try and do it together also. But you can do it within the break or 
after that that would be cool okay okay so it doesn't seem there is any questions right now so the time to take a break let me put a quick banner here it says black pen it's like 11 11:25 GMT approximately like 10 minutes break. Okay, that's good enough. See you after the break. Meanwhile, please ensure or try and do it. Okay, not please ensure, try and do it. Thank you.
Hello, hello, hello. Let's reduce the volume there a bit. Okay. Hi. Good to be back. Hope you all had a good, nice break. And let me remove this. Yep. Get in. And interesting. Okay. That, that was ba my bad. <laughs> Ignore that. Uh, overlay. Perfect. So good to be back. And before going on break, I asked like if you get time, if you could make a stacked bar chart by country and sector. And looks like there is a solution in the chat, which is really good. Okay. So I am going to try and copy paste. Okay. It does not allow me to copy paste, unfortunately. So I'm going to try and copy and paste exactly this thing this function right below just going to change the word industry to sector right here here we have the word industry which is like repeated thrice you could do something like control d in windows command d on mac to multi-select the same words i did it like i pressed that thrice so i selected these three words Twice or twice, I don't know. And let's see if I change that to sector. Okay. Uh, yep, I think that should do it. I'll take this plot stacked bar chart by country and sector, the function name, and I'm going to. Oops, should have first copied and pasted this. So I'm going to copy this particular thing, paste it, stack bar chart by country and sector, sector, okay. And in the function name, it should be this particular function name, okay. And we also need to import it, of course. So imported it and yep, there should be this particular name by industry and there should be one by sector and then you just format it so that it's nicely formatted the whole thing even for visualizations.py i'm going to format it okay everything's nicely formatted let's try and rerun it so yep there we go country and industry country and sector and this is much better looking graph so these are the sectors so there's like technologies basic materials sector there's communication services, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, energy, financials. Why do I keep clicking? Oh, like blah, blah, blah. Okay. I can focus on like one of those things. So there we go. United Kingdom. It has these many companies, which is like less than 50 for sure. And which sector and how many companies we can directly see it so that's good that that's really cool and we completed actually that part as well uh what else can we do so before going on break i said uh can we try and do this using matplotlib and the answer is yes we can it wouldn't be as uh intuitive as this one uh it wouldn't be as interactive as this one but let's give it a try Okay, so I'm going to go over to our code and I'm going to start creating inside visualizations.py a new function. Okay, just to show you, like if you had to do it in matplotlib, what would you do and how would you do it? Okay, let me move out and def. I'm going to say it's going to be exactly like this thing. So we'll plot stacked bar chart by country and sector but with matplotlib okay that's the only difference it takes in a data frame as a input and now this is where things start getting very like blurred very hazy <laughs> so step one oh also here i should have changed this to sector counts Okay, ignore that. That's just like to ensure that everything is 
properly named in the previous one it does not affect our next one so step one we will first create a sec why do i keep messing up the spelling of sector sector counts equals to df dot group by okay before i go ahead could you add options to the industry slicer that aren't from the table like select all or deselect all options as in in the plot in the plot if you want to select or deselect all you could actually like double click on something and it will deselect everything else okay so if i let's say only want to select two things i can like select just two things if i want to select only three things i can actually select just three things so if you double click somewhere on one of the things it will select that and deselect all if you double click again it will like reset back so that's yeah exactly it's it's a nice option right <laughs> don't have to think too much about it we don't have to write specific code for it or anything Okay, so coming back to df dot group by, uh, yeah. So step one should be to group it by something something, which in our case would be exactly same as the previous one. We will group it by country, and then we will group it by sector. Then we will find the size of it. Okay. And where were we using this name equals to counts when we were doing this wide DF and we were passing the values, right? So we were passing those values and that's where the count was come into picture. But in this case, okay, uh, we don't really need to do it. Okay. So I'm going to leave it there. We'll see what, what happens. Next, in matplotlib, if you remember our, from our first one, Okay, the plot market cap distribution plot. It needs this figure comma ax. It has like two outputs or two variables. There's a figure and there's an axis. And then we do plt dot sub subplots, right? So remains the same. We do figure comma axis and we do plt dot subplots. Okay. What else had we passed inside subplots? We could pass a figure size, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass a fig size. And in this case, we can give it like 20 comma 15, let's say, okay? Uh, random number here. We can see what's the width and height look like. Okay, now sector counts is our variable. Okay, so I'm going to call that variable sector counts, then put a dot plot on it. I will tell it that the kind is going to be a bar chart. So kind equals to bar. It, sub, it is supposed to be a stacked bar chart. So stacked equals to true. Uh, in Python, the true starts with a capital T. So stacked equals to true. And the axis of that is going to be this particular variable axis. Okay. So if you called it like axis, you would give it like axis here. So the axis is going to be this particular variable. Perfect. So we created a sector counts, uh, like on our sector counts, we are doing a plotting on it. And it is supposed to be a bar chart, stacked, true, axis. Okay. Uh, Next would be like, let's do the things like setting up the title and stuff. So access dot set underscore title was that? Yeah, set X label, sex, uh, set Y label, set title. Yeah, these are the things that we were doing. So let's do that set title equals to, uh, not equals to, sorry, uh, what? number of companies companies by sector in each country yeah this looks much better each country yep 
then you have ax dot set underscore x label on the x axis we'll have the country y label will be number of companies uh okay did we use that previously uh no actually we didn't okay so there is a new thing that i want to show it uh show you all so that is the tick parameters okay so the tick params what what is the tick here so the tick uh, tick is basically these names that you see right so like we have United States, United Kingdom. So these are my ticks on, let's say, x-axis. On, on y-axis, the ticks are 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, right? So now with respect to these ticks, I want to set something. What do I want to set? The way they are rotated. Now in Plotly, they are really nice. Why? Because if it is a small plot, it is like perfectly at 90 degrees. And if you expand it, it like goes to a, what, negative 45 or 90 plus 45, something like that becomes, comes at an angle. You don't have to explicitly do it, but that's not the case with matplotlib. Okay. Uh, it's not as dynamic as that. So we can set the value to be like something specific. I will show you two things. I'll first show you like. What if you set the rotation as 45, okay? So tick params on the X axis, uh, make sure that the country names are rotated at 45 degrees. Okay, that's what we are saying. And uh, the legends, yeah. Uh, this was also nice in Plotly, right? We don't have to think too much about the legend. Did we write the legend previously? Uh, we hadn't. Did we need to? Or oh, we had everything in one color. So we didn't need to focus on legend. But in this case, I'm going to say that it is going to be like title sector. So the legends are supposed to come from the title sector. We can also define its location. So LOC equals to, you can say like it should be upper left or upper right, something like that. So I'm going to say like upper space left. And finally, we return fig from here. So we created a subplot. We created a bar plot, which is tagged true. We added a bunch of labels on the axis. And then we are returning the fig or the figure. So let's come to our uh, main.py. Sorry, I just forgot the name right there. So main.py and all I'm going to do is copy this whole thing, that elif, paste it right there, stack bar chart by country and sector and I'll in bracket put mat plot lib. Okay. Go over to our visualizations, copy the name of the function, come over here and paste that. Now this is going to change. This is not a plotly chart. It is a mat plot lib chart. So if it is a matplotlib, we use st.pyplot to plot the figure. So pyplot. Okay. It's complaining that where are you calling this function? I don't know. So let's tell it that, hey, it's being imported from visualizations. Also, we need to copy this name and put it in our radio buttons, right? So I'll put it right there. And... Yeah, let's format it. So formatted and formatted this. Let's go over here and rerun. Stack bar chart by country and sector, matplotlib. Fingers crossed, hopefully it works. Wait, did it crash? No, it hasn't crashed. Okay, perfect. And this looks ugly. And what's with this like having so many things? And what's like, why does it look so bad? 
okay let's let's fix that one thing at a time step one rotated at 45 degrees does not look good so let's change that to 90 rerun this and hopefully that goes into 90 degree okay much better but it still does not make sense there is country name and there's also i don't know the industry but that should not have happened we are plotting it by sector right so there's country there's sector and okay probably the issue is like reset index so let's try that dot reset under that was reset index right Okay, I passed it reset index. Let's see if that works. What did I do in the main? I just like copied and pasted the elif part. And I called this particular function that we have written. Okay, so when we did reset index, something changed, but it still doesn't make sense. So the number of companies, okay sector is labeled as zero for some reason and what are these values it just does not make sense right now okay what can we do in main uh okay there we go this is the main file and let me see if i can paste it directly there that should have everything let me load it if you go over to main it has yep it has everything so if you look at the code right here in this file you will you'll find like everything that you need Okay, so it seems to me like even the reset index does not work. What do we need to do? So let me, like, I, I'll need to think. Uh, so there's a reset index, but that does not work. We found the size, which is fine. There's a figure size, which was okay. There's a bar plot, but it is still not stacked. Okay, that's very interesting. So in main, we display the same way we did before. Yes, exactly, exactly same way. The only difference is like st.py plot. Okay, I'm confused. This should have worked ideally or at least in my brain it seems like it should have worked ah uh, what am i missing here okay let's see this so the reset index is going to create a problem apparently so if i do dot unstack hmm. okay let's go over here rerun this Wow, that did the trick. Yep, okay. What is unstack? Where is that coming from? Let's go over to pandas. 
and let's search for unstack. This one? Okay. So unstack, it is kind of like my group by or more like a pivoting. So had we done a group by here, we would, we had done a pivoting. Like when we were doing a bar chart with Plotly, we were doing two things. Okay. What we, uh, we were doing a group by, and then we were doing a pivot on it. Okay. But for matplotlib, we are not doing that uh, pivot. Okay. So you can actually do a pivot using this dot unstack, which works in a similar manner. Okay. So it says that you could do like data frame dot pivot uh, or data frame dot stack. In our case, we are doing a pivot pivot a level using unstack. So that's what was missing. Okay. So if you don't do the whole pivot pro, uh, issue, like if you don't do the pivot, this is what you end up with. And yeah, I think that should be that, yeah, yeah that, that resolved the error. So there's United States, United Kingdom, Turkey. Yep. I think all the countries all stacked not very interactive, not very good looking, but just to show you that, yes, you could do it this way. So the location of your labels or legends is on the extreme, is on extreme left on top here, upper left. They are the countries all rotated by like 90 degrees. So that's good. And they are stacked on each other. It makes it very difficult to understand because on Hawaii it does not show how much is the stacking, but it just shows that, okay, they are stacked, right? So just wanted to show you that there is another way of doing it, or you could do it in matplotlib, not very good, not very interactive, but works. And uh, yeah, I was confused about why is this not working? And I realized, oh, I need to pivot. Okay, so that was one thing. And now actually we'll move towards the final bar chart of the day and of the session. Okay, which would be, let me think. Hmm. Scatter plot. Yeah, let's do a scatter plot, but this time we'll use a uh, plotly rather than matplotlib because it's just oh expect okay you are getting an error which says expected and indented block okay so after elif uh do you have like these four spaces for figure and st.pyplot like these are the important things. Yes, as pointed out, it is an indentation error. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be back for like next GHW. We'll do something else. <laughs> but uh, yeah, at least for today and at least for this session, this would be the last one, which also made me realize we only have 10 minutes. So let's, 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 let's quickly get into it. I don't want to spend too much time here. So I will not define it a lot. Just take my word for it right now. So plot, uh, what market cap versus count by sector. Okay, so market cap versus count by sector. And yeah, that should be it. It takes in a data frame as an input. Now we are going to use something called as AGG, okay, dot aggregates. Uh, so first let's create aggregates as a variable. I know, right, Python being Python. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so step one, we'll do a group by. So df dot 
group by and what are we going to group it by previously we were grouping it by two things that's why we had to add an array and inside an array we had two strings like yeah two things in strings this time we are only going to group by sector okay so df dot group by sector and then we are going to use something called as dot aggregates which exists in pandas uh let me quickly show it to you agg Oof. yep group by and dot aggregates uh, i hope there's a good example so let's assume this is uh the data okay they are like a b c three columns it has like this amount of data and by using dot aggregates you can actually tell it to do multiple things at the same time okay uh, bad example agg data frame dot agg yep okay perfect good example right now so let's say you have these three columns abc and if you want to do multiple things on the data you can use the dot agg which is an aggregate function you can give it a variable right here and you can tell it the column name and the thing that you want to do like i want to find the max of column a i want to find the min of column b i want to find the average or the mean of column c so you can do those things you can tell it that for column a give me the sum as well as the minimum okay together for column b give me the minimum and the maximum of it together so it gives you minimum and maximum for column a sum and minimum so you can use the dot agg and you can tell it the column name and what you want it to do and then you can also eventually store it to a variable okay so that's important why because we are going to use dot agg and i'm going to say there's the first thing is some market cap so we'll find the total of a market cap for each sector so for technology there are like 50 industries in technology let's assume 50 industries in technology everyone has a different market cap one is like 2 billion one is 3 billion one is 5 billion we want to sum them all together so 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus whatever whatever so it's like something okay so sum of the market cap so sum of market cap that is going to be my variable name here and what is it supposed to do it is supposed to go over this column which column this market cap usd numerical column because that has the numbers we created this column yesterday so market cap usd numerical so market cap in brackets usd then space numerical uh also let me see if i can format it yep so some market cap equals to for this is the column name market cap usd numerical and then comma i want to find the sum of it okay don't have too much time so i'm going to hurry a lot so sorry about that and then inside this i'm going to hit enter again and i'm going to say company count that is going to be by another variable and that variable is going to go over the sector column and going to find the count of it okay so sum was the aggregate function here count is the aggregate function which says count it and once that is done then we do reset underscore index on it perfect then we are going to create our figure so fig equals to px dot scatter you can read all about scatter in uh, this plotly scatter plots okay you can read all about scatter plots in here i'm not going to go over it but what it takes it it takes a data frame which in our case is this particular variable sector aggregates on x-axis it is supposed to plot uh this no this variable actually company count so that's going on x-axis on y-axis it is supposed to plot uh this particular variable some market cap and 
then the size or like it will have bubbles okay the scatter plot is basically bubbles so the size is defined by the sum of market cap okay that's important and then we are going to say color them by different sectors so for technology it would be let's say yellow for energy it would be green something like that on hover name it should basically show the name of the sector okay that's important and we can give it a title equals to like exactly i'm going to give it this particular name as the title and you can use something like fig dot update underscore x axis which as the name suggests it gives a new title to it so untitled underscore text equals to let's say count of companies okay and for y-axis so fig dot update instead of x-axis i want to rename the y-axis to be title underscore text equals to sum of market cap in usd finally we will return the fig perfect and i'm going to take why do i copy it okay i'm going to copy this particular line going to paste it i'm going to say that hey this is going to call this particular function right here the name of is going to be this and instead of dot plot it should be plotly underscore chart because this is plotly i only have two minutes whoops and should plan my sessions much better okay i think that should be it rerun it and yep there it is and yeah there you go okay so this is like count of companies wrong spelling on the x-axis on the y-axis this is the title for every company this is the size of the bubble depending on the size company count and sum of market cap okay so that's it actually this is what it plots you can look more into details try and change it but for now let me come back on screen and thank you so much okay that's all i want to say thank you so much everyone for joining hope you learned a lot and okay uh share the ripple so there it goes in the chat okay yes the link is in the chat. The ripple link is in the chat. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Hope you learned something. We debugged some of the errors on screen together. It was like, what is happening? But it's good. And yep, I really appreciate that you all joined. OK, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. And hop into the next stream. See you all later. Bye bye. Thank you.